right, welcome to Stamscaping 101. This is my third video of the day. We're going to use nature set number 23, and we're going to bring in some of the, uh, the processes and concepts and techniques that we've been talking about the previous few videos here. We're going to start off with our covered bridge, and I'm going to be stamping it in dye-based inks onto a silk finish cardstock. And what that is, it's, it's something very close to uh, matte, except it has a little bit of a coating on there just to give it a little bit more of a, a sealed surface to keep the ink. Um, I would say in its truest form, you know, as opposed to kind of absorption in the back and leading to kind of a lighter, um, a lighter depiction of whatever you're printing or stamping on this on this material. You know, all these types of papers come from the printing industry, so kind of offset printing. Okay, now I have just colored this stamp up all with black, okay? Now, let's go into some of those additional colors that you can run on here. Now, this isn't... I just did a video on solid versus um, outline styles of uh, imagery. Now, these are largely outline, but there are some volumes and masses in here. See, I mean, you can bring in some additional colors into it if you want to, just to kind of give things a little bit of a head start and to give you a little bit of variation um, with your forms in here, okay? I'm going to do this one in kind of an autumn style of um, color scheme, okay? Fall colors. So let's go in here, and I'm going in here, and I'm just kind of mixing everything on here. It's not going to give this, you know, grand, you know, type of uh, impression of all these colors, because this is more of a, a tonal outline design. It's not solids, okay? But again, this just gives us a little bit of a head start here. Okay, I'm going to stamp this fairly low, because I'm thinking about putting a quote in here, if it will fit. If it doesn't, no big deal. We'll just change up. This is just using a quarter size piece of paper, so not a lot will fit, especially when we're using a, a stamp the size of this uh, covered bridge, the larger version of it, okay? All right, so in here you see a little bit of a tinge of some red up there. I don't even know if we can see any green down here. Let me see if I can tell eh, slightly right in here in this area. Okay, so not a big, um, you know, kind of color statement, okay? But again, it does give us a little bit of a head start as opposed to just stamping everything in black. Getting that little tinge of color in there is just a subtle thing, and I mean, it didn't take us long to do either. Okay, now, let's go in with some of the um, color, you know, direct to um, stamp, okay? So, if I stamp this out in black, I'm not going to color those leaves. I would have to color the perimeter of these because this is solid right here. So this is one of those things, situations where if you want color on there, you have to color directly onto the stamp. Now what I like to do is I like to just go with black like that. Now if that makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to do that. But what I do now is I just go in here and with my marker, I color this in. Sometimes if I just color only that color, of red onto this. Uh, sometimes to me it doesn't look quite as, oh, kind of varied and rendered. Okay, so I like to put um, some of that color on first to kind of give it a base, and it's a dark color in the black. Okay, now I'm just going and kind of scumbling around. What I'm doing is I'm doing something like this onto some of these leaves. Okay, so hopefully I get some variations of kind of black and red and black and orange here, okay, in my impression, okay. I'll stamp this out. Let's see. I'm not sure how much space that um, quote stamp will take, but there it is. I didn't use too much of it there. But there's those colors right there, okay. Now we're going to do a little bit more of this. Maybe I won't do it with the black. Maybe I'll go for some different color impressions too. So I'll hit this with a dark brown, like so. Okay, so instead of just going with black, we're getting a little bit more variation. I'll hit this with uh, some red. You can use yellow with some ochres or whatnot. But this is giving me a lot of variation, I think. Okay, and I just kind of roll this. This red right here is really dry. I need to re-ink it, but it's okay if it's a little bit dry for this purpose because the drier it is, the more ink it will pull off of the stamp, okay? 
Not that I want to pull it all off. Okay, I want to uh, have some uh, some of those tones on there, the dark brown, the black. Again, so I get some of that nice variation. Maybe you even want to have a little bit of green. I just re-ink this, you know, sometimes, you know, the tree is not turning all at the exact same time. I don't know what this will look like, but let's take a look. Okay. Okay. Looks like that. All right. Tell you what, let's go for some lighter versions. Let's not apply any um, additional tone. Let's go for another one. Let's go for a different color impression. So go for some red. Now it does have some of that green and everything else on there, but go for some orange maybe. Maybe this will be a lighter impression. You can layer things too, okay? You can stamp that over and I can stamp that right over the top of it. Don't go for the exact same location, but let's layer some of it and have some of it out here on the side. Okay. Is there a red? It changed too much. I was surprised. I thought it would come up much more orange. Let's go for a third impression without going into our um, black or darker colors, and let's get a really light color. I'll tell you what. That was orange. Let's go in with some of this green here now. Okay. I tell you what. Orange, green, orange. I was thinking that might be a little bit too harsh, so let's kind of spread that around a little bit. Okay, let's come up here, put another overhanging limb over there, there we go, see that? It's almost like watercolor. Well, you know, dye-based things, you know, another name for those are watercolor pens, right? Let's go for another impression of it. So lighter impressions, kind of looks a little bit more distant and full in there, right? See that? There's my second impression, there's a third impression right over here. It's up here too, but it's very subtle. Okay, so anyways, all of our coloring, we don't have to color those now. The color was just inherently in the impression. Okay, all right, so I had fun the other day playing around with some colored pencils. Let's try that again, okay? Let's see if I have the colors for this. We'll choose some reds. Oranges, how about some greens, like this, uh, maybe some yellow, okay, and how about brown for the um, structure, here's some, I don't know what color that is, I don't know the color, you know, what these are called, you know, these different colors, I, I guess they have numbers on them, well, they do have the names stamped on the side. I wonder if they still do that. That's a very expensive process to color stamp this gold on there. Okay, so anyways, like I said before, my approach to um, coloring, <laughs> it's not, I don't know if it's technically correct or anything like that, but I usually work from kind of my lighter tones into my darker tones. So I don't necessarily want something yellow, okay? But I might want that as kind of a base tinge. And I might want it as just a very light one, okay? I can put some of this into my trees. And yellow and orange come from yellow. I mean, uh, yellow, uh, I mean, uh, uh, sorry, orange and, and greens, okay? They both have something in common, which is yellow. All right, so I can use that in both zones, and I, I think this is what gives those areas, will give continuity to those areas. They have just something to relate to instead of just the trees being oranges and reds and, you know, whatever colors, and the greens being greens, now you're giving these two things something in common, okay? It doesn't have to be, like, this value of yellow, right? It could be this value of it, or even lighter, something like that. So really utilize your um, application of your media to your advantage, so you get the max, you can maximize the uh, usage of it. I'm going to put a touch of this yellow on this um, structure as well. 
Okay. Now, in my water, wait a minute, yellow water, what, you know, that sounds gross. <laughs> well, this water might be reflecting the colors up in the trees, okay? So we might think of water, okay, the water is blue. Well, if it's reflect, if it's, you know, really clear and reflective, what you're going to get is those colors that it's mirroring down in this area, okay? And same thing on the, I don't know, just on all objects, you get that same type of uh, kind of shared colored light. All right, that, I think that's all the yellow I'll use. I mean, it can go back and add a little bit more, but we'll see. Okay, here's some orange. This is gonna start to match the colors up here a little bit more. Orange doesn't, but I'm saying it's kind of moving in that direction because what I'll use is some red over the top of this, okay? A lot of you, I'm guessing, are going to be a lot more practiced at things like colored pencils than I am. I've probably done this, eight, I don't know, in, in 30 years or roughly so of stamping. I'm wondering if I've even done five scenes using colored pencils, okay? I don't, I'm not against them. I just haven't really done them. I love the look of colored pencils. Okay, now I'm putting some of this down here in my grasses. If you've gone over to, uh, you know, seen kind of fall foliage, it's often in the bushes as well, okay? Um, they have the same kind of color scheme. I touched up here and I got um, smeared some of that ink up there. I'll show you what I'll do with that later. But, um, okay, that was some orange. Uh, well, let's let's not be so gingerly with that. Let's get a little bolder up here. You can color with, you know, whatever your markers up here too, and then add the, you know, the orange back into it. But I'm working my volumes, okay? You can see I'm not just coloring the whole thing one uniform application or intensity of this color. I'm kind of pressing so it looks like I'm, you know, what I'm doing is I'm doing this, you know, see lighter and some darker, and that's what I'm doing in these trees, okay? The darker, more kind of heavy-handed application, I'm doing it in the darker area of that object. And if you want to be able to see where it is, see, this is just darker here, this is darker here, this is darker here, right? It's lighter on the top, darker here, darker here. It's wherever the impressions are, for the most part. Those are the shadows, because those are kind of heavier. Uh, there's heavier concentration of black ink when I was drawing it. So you put a heavier concentration of your inks or your media, whatever, in those areas, okay? Just observe the design, okay? And you don't have to be perfect about it. That's, you know, I've drawn the design, so you don't have to be perfect. It's more like, see that coloring that I just did there for that grass down there? Oh, look at this, you know? This is what I'm doing. Everyone's kind of used to coloring kind of a perfect zone of something. All right. Now that looks good too. I, I do like that look, but a lot of people find this harder because they're used to doing more, you know, much more work. Okay. This is less work. Less work means that you're leaving some areas, right? But the areas that you leave in scenes, those end up being the light because you haven't colored it all in. It's a lighter area. So it's less work. It's less work in application, technique, etc. Maybe it's harder to put on the brakes though, if that's, you know, that's what you've been doing all along. And then again, that's not wrong. That looks great for certain types of, you know, um, coloring, stamping, whatever. All right, here's the red, okay. It's really just very, very um, kind of scumbled, okay. Scumbled again is kind of just when you're doing this type of thing. See, I'm going with kind of with a heavier hand in some of these, you know, to get a little bit of a brighter red. Now these colors, the, of these colored pencils are, yeah, I would say, I almost said never. I wouldn't say that, but uh, 
uh, dye based inks are going to be quite a bit brighter in general. Okay, the colored pencils are be will be a little bit more mellow in terms of the intensity. Okay. Right, so it's kind of coming around a little bit. I do feel I need to get a little bit more intense though with things. Let's go back to the orange and let's kind of bring that about now. Okay, how about some of this areas down here in the grasses? Okay. I'm not playing a uh, background music right now. It's my son practicing piano, and when someone's you got your kid practicing, you don't say, "Hey, can you hold that down?" You, you, know, <laughs> you hope they practice on their own without you know without asking them. As for me, I don't want to stop, you know, doing this. See this, I'm kind of putting my darker colors underneath my tree, you know, so I'm going with a heavier hand on grass, but in the lighter area, you know, you might be using this amount of ink, uh, not ink, but pigment, you know, from your, from your pencils or whatever you're using, chalks, you know, pastels, whatever. Okay. Now, it looks kind of weird a lot of times in areas because there's a much heavier saturation. Like, my road looks really weird, and this, you know, the mill looks weird. It's because we haven't treated it yet, you know, with, with tone. Okay, so let's go in here and let's treat a little bit of this brown. I, like I said, I usually start off pretty light, you know, because I can always go darker, but it's one of those things. You don't want to go too dark too fast. I guess, that, you know, there's ways to remove colored pencil, right? Not all, but a little bit. But I'd rather not have to do that, so I just kind of take it slow, and I just kind of develop it accordingly, okay? All right, now see that where I just colored in the side of my um, covered bridge? I'm just done with the light tone first, okay? This. I'm going to go dark, light, dark on the roof, just so it gives it some variation. Okay. One of the things I tend to forget are the, the windows through that, you know, that bridge. I should put some, you know, tone on the inside there. Or hit it with some of those colors in the background, you know. A little bit. Some reds and some greens in there. So... Some more green up here. Um, okay, that was my brown. Yeah, I can go with a little bit of a hard. You know, sometimes you can get kind of a darker brown. Go with a little bit of a harder application, more full application, using your existing color. Or you can move up, you know, into a different version of it. Okay, so. See, as I do this, I'm bringing some of this into my grasses as well, so it doesn't look so um, kind of unrelated and just separate. Okay. All right. Going with the darker brown here. Side of this bridge. We're saying that the bridge isn't painted white or something like that, which you could do. Okay. Kind of aging my roof a little bit. Yeah, this is stonework right here. Put a little bit of shading into it. And hit the 
fencing a little bit if you want to. It's, it's really whatever you want. There's no set thing. Okay, now see here on the bridge, one of the things that occurred to me on my last one is I, I wasn't bold enough. I needed to kind of you know, really darken in that end. See, when you darken in the, the vertical side, the roof seems much more um, kind of top lit, and then you get um, kind of a, a stronger sense of a, a three-dimensional object. You go like this under the eaves, and you're saying, wait a minute, how do I, how would I know to color in under the eaves? In the design, okay, I have these little areas of shadow right underneath that eave there, okay? See this right in here? It's a little bit darker underneath this overhang. So you can just kind of look, you know, in here there's shadow, so we just reiterate the shadow areas like that, okay? If there's a shadow around some of these rocks, if you want to, you can get very detailed and come into these areas like that and hit them with some additional shadows at the base of them, all right? Okay, let's see. Let me try to get some of this brighter orange in here. Grab another pencil. Here's kind of a, what color is this? Yellow, I was going to say ochre. I was going to say it's probably not called that, but this one is. Okay. Okay, and some is ochre down here. Let's brighten up this, or warm up this road a little bit. When I, whenever I use these last, I apparently sharpened them, and boy, I haven't used these for years and years. Here's some blue. All right, I can hit my area up here with, I'm gonna hit a little bit of blue over here on the ground. It doesn't mean that there's water on the road or something like that, but it just gives it a little tinge color in here, okay? I'm even going to do that in my sky, uh, just a touch, okay? I'm not holding this too strong because I don't want to touch that area up there. It's still a little bit wet. Okay, so there's a little bit of blue. Put you know, a little bit of blue on these rocks around in here. Just to kind of bring this out in here. Do you see this little tinge of blue right there? Well, look at it from arm's distance. Doesn't that kind of bring kind of a little bit of a continuity to this whole area down below? All right, now let's see if I have enough space in here for a quote stamp. It's not, you know, kind of ideally suited maybe for this quote as far as the space goes the uh this is nature always wears the colors of the um spirit and i, I think that'll look pretty good in there um hmm i'm deciding if i want to do this stamp this out in, in a color i don't know maybe if i do it i don't know it won't stand out as much Let's make it fairly bold, I think. Okay. All right. I kind of put it over here on the side because I want to do some things over here. Maybe put a little bird or something like that. I think I'd, yeah, I think that would look pretty good. Um... Seeing if I have a my little flock of birds right next to me. Let me go find that stamp. Okay, good. It was right next to me. I'll stamp out our little gulls. This doesn't come in the set, but like right here. I think those birds kind of in this um Composition look pretty good with that quote like that. See that? All right, but now we're not done because 
Um, remember in the, uh, the previous um, videos, we were talking about... Um, what were we talking about? Um, visual depth <laughs> through the use of values, okay? So we've used our different values, you know, in here and in our impressions up here. What minute are we at? We're only at 25 minutes. I mean, we've used a lot of techniques in here. I think this is a pretty good um, visual and textural and uh, depth, um, depiction of depth in here. All right, let's go with some white pigment ink, okay? And let's bring in some additional depth. Oh, and we'll use some um, pens, okay? Paint pens, okay? This is a perfect spot for some paint pens. Let's use the paint pens right now, okay? This is a perfect opportunity for them. Maybe I should use some of my thicker paint pens. Eh, I don't know. This isn't super bold of a of a uh, color statement in here. Let, maybe we'll, we'll just stick with our uh, seven, uh, 0.7 millimeter pens. Okay, these are uh, Artistro paint pens. Okay. You really got to shake these things up quite a bit. I have a set of 42 pens, I think. Yeah, 42 paint pens. Um, I like that they're clear so you can really see when you've um, shaken them up enough. I wish you didn't have to shake them up quite as much, but that's not a bad price to pay. I think the reason why we have to shake them up is the reason why they don't clog on you because they really go and separate back into solution um, when you're, you know, you're done using them. These paint pens stick to anything too. You can stamp them on glass, so stamping them over the top of wax is not a problem, okay? With some things, you know, like a water-based pen over wax, that's not going to work. Now these are water-based, but they're acrylic, so they're, you know, they... that's one of their... Um, selling points is that they, they, you can write on anything with them. Glass, plastic, papers, you know. Um, I wouldn't use these, these fine point ones here, but the thicker styles, you can use them on things like rocks. Rock, rock art, I guess. Okay, so I'm just kind of building up a little bit of tone in a certain area, so I'm kind of condensing it like this, remember? You condense and then you kind of dissipate like that, okay? You don't have to be exact about it. We're going to be running some uh, white pigment ink over it. Now let's try these uh, different colors of oranges. These, it's not a, any super bright orange. In fact, I, I'm looking at my set. I don't even see a real bright orange. Actually, that one looks pretty bright. I thought that looked kind of dull to me. I guess it's because I'm looking through this translucent barrel here. Okay. Uh, yeah, that looks good. It's a little bit brighter. Okay. Kind of stands out because of how bright it is, you know, amongst the um, kind of, you know, more mellow um, in terms of intensity colored pencils. But these make sure nice little embellishments, I think. Okay, here's an even lighter one. I'm taking it. This is a pastel, almost like peach color right here. I haven't even used this pen yet. I have to feed it, so what you do is you press down the, uh, the spring, releasing it into the, uh, opening it up into the barrel. And we have a little bit more of a pastel orange here, okay. Looks pretty good. And, okay, why not white? It's not that we're saying that the, the leaves are white, okay? But in here, we're going to have a lot of white lighting, you know, reflecting off of our objects down here. So, um, like this, you know, this is a, you know, a red pencil, right? But see that, there's that highlighting on here, right down there. It's white, because that's the color of my studio lighting, okay? But it's an orange pen, but you get that same sort of lighting, okay? So if you've retained areas of 
white in your scene, you're saying that, that you know, that's the color of the lighting that's in this scene. If everything was like all blue in here, you know, this white pen might stand out a little bit too much and kind of look a little bit unrelated as far as the, uh, you know, the color of lighting within, a, you know, the, that space, that area, the location, okay? So I'm putting these on the top sides of these trees, okay, because on the top billow, those are lighter. You put the darker colors in the darker areas, and you put your lighter, whatever, media in your lighter areas, okay? On, t on the top kind of tufts of uh, grass. But again, I, you're not being like so super careful, I'm not. I'm just, in general, I'm kind of hitting it in these areas, and yeah, I'm hitting it in other areas that, you know, might be in the shadows, but, it's, you know, that's my point. You know, just in general, you're hitting it in certain areas, but, you know, if you hit it in a few areas, or a lot of areas, or a ton of areas that are not in the area of the design that's conducive for that, it's not a big deal. You can't even tell. Okay, so how about some of these on these leaves as well? Okay. And it just puts a little bit of that colored light in there. You can even hit, you know, you can put some orange dots up there with the orange pens if you wanted to, or red or whatever. It just makes them look a little bit more three-dimensional, okay? All right, so here we have that. It's a little bit too bright in there and busy, okay? I think it looks okay, but not, you know, ideal. And that's where you just come in with your white pigment ink. And I'm kind of rolling this into a little bit of a more condensed ball like that, where this is a little bit firm, okay? Inking up, my pad is not really very, I'm pushing into that quite a bit, because my pad is not very juicy, okay? If yours is, do not do that. Just a couple light tappings on it, okay? Blot off before you do it, too. Oftentimes I don't because I keep my pad kind of medium to dry, in fact. I, for me, that's the ideal. Okay, but that being said, for me, I can just go right on here, but for you, if your pad is really super juicy, blot it off quite a bit. Test it out on a dark piece of paper to see how much ink you're applying. And then when you start applying this, start in your lighter areas, okay? And we'll work it into our trees, like so. But I kind of, it kind of just, you know, slowly penetrates those images, okay? So that I have a lot of control over it like that. Okay, so you see that lighting is coming right over the trees. Like so. Okay, let me put some of this on the side here where I got real smudgy fingerprints there that kind of eradicates that, but let's have this kind of coming in here like that. See that right there? How that kind of integrates into those trees, and look how more mellow those trees are. Let's put some underneath this tree right in here. I know that's where I put my shadows, but we'll have some kind of this fog entering that area. It looks really great down at um, underneath objects where light meets dark, okay? So see, that's where light met dark right in here. We'll throw a little bit of fog and mist around in here. I like it a little bit right in here. You know, see, I left my road a little bit light, so I can put some right in here, kind of leading up to my um, covered bridge area, like that. I can put some down here. I can go a little bit of fog, no fog, fog. So you're kind of oscillating this, the application of it, like this. So see how that looks? Doesn't that look real atmospheric and misty? Wouldn't be bad to have some of those as bushes right down here, too. Okay, but well watch this now. See that fogging effect right in here? Look at that kind of atmospheric type of uh, quality that that brought to it. Okay, now let's do something up here. See these leaves? 
let's do the same thing for some of those, okay? Let's just put some of them in this beautiful enveloping um, light, okay? I'm putting mostly the ones that are a little bit lighter too, you know, but I oscillate. I don't put it all over all of it so that you get this these contrasting um, leaves in here. Some of them look like they're illuminated. Some don't. I need to be real careful. I'm starting to smudge. That ink in there is still really wet, you know, from those pens. I just re-inked a lot of those pens, so ye. That doesn't look too good. I smudged in there. Okay. I'll show you what you do with that. We have our um, stamp right here again. Okay. Actually, this might work out pretty good because I haven't used this ink in a while. You can use the brilliance, um, but I'm working on um, matte. You know, this matte paper, silk, but it's close to matte. Let's use our Claire black. This is a beautiful dark black right here. And I'm going to put this right over this and layer my leaves even more. Okay. With this black, these black impressions. Okay, there we go. Something like that. All right, so you can't see my smudging in there as much. And we have this kind of layered uh, fall foliage, okay? So, okay. So anyways, maybe I should have heat set that. There was a lot of ink on my, uh, my pens, uh, my markers. Okay, I'm getting really smudgy here with my fingers here too. Uh, let's see, let's go with some more of that brilliance and be done. I guess I should watch my fingers, huh? Or have a little post-it note underneath there so I can kind of move this around without kind of touching it so much. Oh boy, I really got a big fingerprint down here. Okay, I have to add apply quite a bit of this right in here. Okay, now I've mentioned this before, but um, when this dries, it will be um, the white dries darker. You know, it becomes more transparent than what it looks like when you first apply it. So apply a little bit more or a lot more than you think you'll need. Or you just wait for it to dry and see what it looks like, then add more accordingly, okay? All right, so there we go. I would hit the bottom of that a little bit, but I think that's drying too. It's super humid where I am right now, but okay, let's take a look at this. Okay, 38 minutes. Okay, this went a little longer. <laughs> but the general color and everything, I mean, it's not, it's not too long, you know, for a card and whatnot. With, I mean, we really used multimedia on here, but again, we didn't have to, you know, color in like all a bunch of little leaves up there or something like that. You know, we colored in the open areas back there, but I think that uh, it lends itself to a pretty varied and rich surface. You know, when we're talking about the multimedia on there, colored pencils look a lot different than um, dye-based inks. So having those two used in here in conjunction with one another, um, but I think harmonize pretty well. But to bring the pencils, which just aren't as bright as dye-based inks, up a little bit more in terms of the intensity, that's where the, uh, you know, the colored pens um, work out really well in there. But sometimes it's too much, so I just kind of knock it back with the white pigment ink. White pigment ink does every, you know. It's just kind of the solution to everything in terms of um, visual harmony. It does so many different things for, for us in these pieces, mainly bringing everything together a little bit more in terms of the visual harmony and plus um, just from a psychological standpoint having that kind of softer texture in there it changes the spirit of the piece having it now I wouldn't do you don't want everything soft um, but just having it kind of in whatever in a few different locations 
varies your piece and it just really extends um, the textural visual range of your piece and I think that's what gives pieces a little bit more emotion is when you're kind of aware of the space in between objects in terms of having this kind of mist in the air and then it's an illuminated mist at that so okay so anyways I hope you enjoyed the piece and I'm not going to card this up uh, because I'm gonna have to to uh, wait for that to dry and uh, I don't feel like doing that right now so anyways um, and I don't feel like heat setting I, I think I want this one just to um, air dry on its own I think that'll be best um, but I will uh, format this and uh, I don't know, maybe I'll put it up in the Flickr gallery or something like that so anyways, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. I'm getting a little bit more, you know, kind of comfortable with my colored pencils. The rendering of this um, bridge here is a lot better. But um, anyways, if you have any kind of tips or advice for me, please leave it in the comment section. Or any questions on anything, uh, do so. And uh, I'll get back with you as soon as I can. So thanks as always for watching. Thanks as always for tuning into the Stampscapes channel. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Autumn at the bridge.